Welcome to Crypto News and Investigative Reports. I'm glad that you're able to join us. I've been off for a couple of weeks. I'm glad to be back. I took a step back away from the cryptocurrency and the digital asset you know, uh, story. And I took a couple of weeks off. Uh, like I said, I'm glad to be back and thanks for joining us. Uh, I'll start with this. The company Ripple Labs, then the digital asset XRP. I got a question. I'll start with the question today. How could XRP be so undervalued? <laughs> Anybody has the answer to that? How could such an, a, an amazing company like Ripple Labs and the digital asset XRP be so undervalued? 45 cents, guys. 45 cents. Um, for the amount of things that it's involved with, with the disruption uh, on the technology having uh, the disruption that it has, has caused in banking around the globe, um, the, the, it, it's just, it's just mind-boggling. It, it is mind-boggling to me uh, how much, how undervalued this digital asset really is. It's incredible to only be 45 cents, 45 cents for this incredible, uh, to be a part of this uh, incredible uh, digital asset XRP. Um, I would say to you uh, that the digital asset XRP is a ticking time bomb. It can go, it, it, when it goes, it is going to blow up. It's a ticking time bomb. Um, and, and the third thing I'll say is the Ripple Lab story is becoming one of political power and economic power. The story about Ripple Labs and the digital asset XRP is no longer just a story about a software company that's in San Francisco that's made software for payments. Uh, this company has disrupted banking globally. So the story has become a political powerful story and a one of economic power. Anytime you're talking about moving money around the world, you're talking about political power and you're talking about economic power. And um, just to add to this is that this uh, uh, ripple, as we've seen in some of the news reports since I've been away, that it's even con been connected to the uh, to the White House, to the Trump administration. And um, we also saw that at the Swell Conference with the former president being there, as well as the International Monetary Fund being there. So this story of Ripple Labs and the, dig the digital asset XRP is becoming a story of, of a global impact story, a global powerful story, a global economic story, a global political story. So with that being said, I, I want to go into this uh, International Journal of Academics Research in Business and in Social Sciences. Uh, they have updated it uh, to uh, from June 28, 2018. This is do dollarization 2.0. A cryptocurrency, the impact of traditional banks and fiat currency. Um, this is how I, I think this is when you when you read this is a great read. Uh, you should take the time if you want to understand what kind of impact uh, fiat currency is having on banking uh, uh, and uh, cryptocurrency. I'm sorry if you want to understand uh, what cryptocurrency and what is doing to banking, which I believe this is the ripple lab story and the digital asset xrp story what they're doing to banking this is excellent reading uh it's only about nine uh pages uh but you want to read it and it talks about dollarization 2.0 and for those of you that do not know what dollarization 2.0 is i have a definition is it a definition for you uh the sustainability of the cryptocurrency relies on the internet therefore dollarization 2.0 which is cryptocurrency is the internet-based currency which transaction is peer-to-peer -peer, decentralized and has no legal tender that has to come to restore the lost confidence and convenience of the paper dollar to currencies so that's the uh, definition of dollarization 2.0 in other words um, banking has been totally uh, this banking has been totally disrupted because of cryptocurrency and and so that's why we see a struggle between um, banking commercial banking we see a struggle with central banking we see a struggle with the international monetary fund and we see a struggle with world banks the world bank trying to figure out what they need to do about uh, cryptocurrency uh, and so I think this is really part of the ripple lab story and the digital asset XRP. 
And I, I, I won't read the whole thing for the sake of time. I want to make this as short as possible. Uh, but I'll go over some of the bold prints. The background of the study, it has become official that globalization via the Internet now has its currency to aid financial transactions. The Internet has been noted to be the most significant avenue for promotion of globalization. Um, let's keep moving a little further down. Uh, the statement of the problem, it says the curiosity of this study is to address the idea of a free range of cryptocurrency without regulation and its influence on fiat currency and banking. And that's, you know, that keeps in my mind that this is part of the Ripple Labs and the Digital Asset XRP story. Um, it talks about the literature that they reviewed. They talked about the 2008 uh, financial crisis, which is part of the cryptocurrency story. Um, uh, I want to read this. The phenomenon was part of the reason that why Satoshi Nakamoto introduced the cryptocurrency in 2009. Uh, it says that the, the uh, cryptocurrency that Nakamoto in 2008 developed was an electronics uh, cash system which was peer-to-peer -peer that would eliminate the interference of a third party called the clearing houses. And so uh, it talks about this, talks about uh, no need for clearing houses. And that, that's a, a very uh, a serious, as it, this is great reading for those of you that want to understand the, uh, the cryptocurrency uh, story. The focus, uh, the objective and methodology objective, the focus of this study is to determine the impact of cryptocurrency on banks and fiat currency, promote regulation of all cryptocurrency activities. This is a very, um, a very uh, informative uh, document. Uh, I ran across this document, of course, researching, and it enlightened me to the whole situation between banking, fiat currency, and cryptocurrency. Uh, fiat currencies versus cryptocurrencies. According to Chevy 2013, fiat currencies has both political and economic power. And that, with that, that brought to my mind the story of Ripple Labs and the digital asset XRP. That's why I would say to you that the Ripple Labs story is becoming one of a political story and one of an economic powerful story. Uh, and as you read this, um, um, and a as you read through this, like I said, it's nine pages, and as you read through it, it really brings clarity of the story of uh, cryptocurrencies, fiat currencies, and banking. Because to me, uh, uh, that's where the whole story is. The whole story is with cryptocurrency, fiat versus the fiat currency, and banking. Uh, the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, Central Banks, and Commercial Banking. Uh, anyway, so that that you want to make sure that you uh, read that uh, the the uh, links is, is is here. I have the links for that. Uh, let's get to uh, some other news. X Rapid, uh, the first five confirmed financial institutions using X Rapid for cross border payments. The first official publicly confirmed use case of Ripple X Rapid. These companies are private and not much public information is made available to us. So with that, with uh, V America's Money Knit Tent, uh, Mercury FX, Collex, and, and a CCF Credit Union, I uh, wasn't really able to see what kind of an immediate impact uh, that them signing up with Ripple, uh, with the digital asset XRP, and with X Rapid. Um, there's not much uh, immediate financial information. Uh, what I'm saying is I would really like to know with these, uh, with the with these five uh, companies officially using X Rapid, uh, is that how much is that saving them? How much are they making? Is it better? Uh, how you know? How, how can we know? I mean, you know that that's what we want to know about this. We hear uh, that how great it is for uh, companies to sign up using X Rapid, but um, there's not much information being given to us about their financials because these are private companies. I did some research uh, for the last couple of days trying to find their financials uh, uh, before and after, before X Rapid and of course since X Rapid and I wanted to know did it have an immediate impact? Does it have an immediate impact on a company once they sign up to use X Rapid immediately? Um, Part of that reason is because of the Nordstrom Vorstrom accounts. 
If companies are not going to have to fund Nordstrom Vorstrom accounts, then it seems that it should be at, uh, at least, I don't know, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, uh, whatever the length of time is, especially for commercial banking, not to have to fund Nordstrom Vorstrom accounts. There should be an, an immediate impact in terms of savings. Um, with that being said, uh, I looked at the PNC Bank, and uh, what's great about uh, PNC is that they have announced that they're working with RippleNet, and uh, we're able to watch them because PNC is a commercial bank in the United States having to abide by the commercial banking laws. And with that being said, you can go and follow them. Their financials are made public. To, as opposed to these five companies, their financials are not made public, so there's not much information. We'll continue to follow it and see what kind of impact X Rapid has made on these companies since these companies has announced that they're going to be using X Rapid. Another story is introducing XRP cash outs on Omni. Uh, this is a story of really to me about X Spring and the success of X Spring. Um, I'll read a little bit about this. I think you all might be aware of Omni and how great uh, and how successful they become uh, by attaching themselves to distributed ledger technology and using uh, X, uh, the digital asset XRP. We're building towards a world of frictionless access to the things we need as we need as we need them, irrespective of ownership. Uh, to realize this vision, we set out to implement payment systems that was both uh, instantaneous and global, which is why we partnered with Ripple back in January and why we're excited to announce the XRP cash out option. By enabling XRP cash out, we're aiming to lower the barrier entry for crypto curious consumers and reduce the risk because you still own the asset. Very great, great news here, guys. Ready to give it a try, rent your things on Omni. When someone rents from you, you will earn money that you can then cash out to XRP and use or U.S. dollars. While, while our San Francisco Bay Area and Portland communities have a des desire, oh, sorry, have a diverse assortment of reliable items, the most popular ones are currently bikes, folding chairs, folding tables, vacuums, carpet cleaners, tents, and drones. Uh, and a little behind the scenes in uh, Intel, we see the most, um, I'm sorry, he says, we see the most unfulfilled searches for musical instruments, drums, and keyboards and cameras. So it almost sounds like uh, that uh, they, they're, um, it almost sounds like Craigslist to me, <laughs> uh, uh, a Craigslist that you get paid XRP for. So congratulations to Omni. This is great news, but congratulations to X Spring because this is really a X Spring story. And we know that X Spring is part of the suite of things that Ripple Labs has to offer, that they connect with projects, with entrepreneurs, and uh, they use uh, the digital asset, XRP, and they use the distributed ledger technology, interledger protocol, those things that are offered by the Ripple Labs company. And so this is a successful story, not only for Omni, but this is also a successful story for X Spring. Great story. You want to make sure you read that story. Uh, these are, and by the way, uh, all of our stories are on Twitter, and you can join us on Twitter uh, at um, Crypto News and Investigative Reports at Rob Tech P R O B T E C H Rob Tech P. That's our handle at Rob Tech P. Crypto News and Investigative Reports at Rob Tech P. As we continue, uh, we move to the International Monetary Fund, uh, which is a, a which is cu currently still struggling, trying to figure out how to control uh, virtual currencies, how to uh, handle virtual currencies as a as the International Monetary Fund. I, I'll read the article. It says IMF World Bank set framework around fintech advances. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, and the World Bank have weighed in on sovereign considerations and global implications of blockchain and other financial services technologies. It also says IMF Managing Director Crystal, Christine Lagarde echoed the settlement, uh, pointing to the estimated 1.7 billion adults around the world without access to financial service sector. She said this, fintechs can have a major social and economic impact 
for them all and across the membership uh, in general. All countries are trying to reap the benefits while also mitigating the risk. As outlined in the IMF press release, the focus on the 189 membership countries must include the following goals. And they got together and they, they list all 12 of their goals that the IMF is saying that they need to work with in order to be able to work with fintech. Their number one goal is to embrace the promise of fintech, enable technologies to enhance financial services, reinforce competition and commitment to open, free and contestable markets, foster fintech to promote financial inclusion and develop markets, uh, to monitor developments closely, to deepen understanding and evolve in financial systems, blah, 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 blah. They have 12 of these uh, guidelines that they're going to IMF and the World Banks are going to be working with. Which brings me to my next article about the World Bank. Uh, it says banks should le le should leverage the new technology. World Bank president of the blockchain. The World Bank president made this uh, statement on blockchain. His name is Jim Young Kim. The president of the behemoth international financial group World Bank has expressed appreciation for the blockchain technology. The statement came when Young, when Jim Young Kim spoke at the World Bank and International Monetary, the IMF yearly conference meeting taking place in Indonesia on, uh, in, uh, on October 11, 2018. He stated how helpful the technology has been to the group. Um, it helped them reduce the paperwork from formalities of the traditional methods of banking and created a decentralized yet organized platform. This guy has definitely had a change of heart. This guy was worse than Warren Buffett on his comments regarding cryptocurrencies. Like they were both calling cryptocurrencies and blockchain a Ponzi scheme. That's exactly what Jim Young Kim said. Uh, Kim has had a change of heart. Kim has been a critic of cryptocurrencies in the past. He stated this in October 2017 on CNBC. Uh, and uh, this is what he said. In other times when blockchains was used, when blockchain was used, they were basically Ponzi schemes. So it's very important that if we go forward with it, we'll sure that it's not going to be used to exploit. So he's trying to make he's trying to make a change. Uh, the IMF, World Bank, they're really trying to make a change, and um, I've always said that they're trying to figure out how to control it because that's what the IMF does, that's what the World Bank does, uh, that's what uh, Commercial Bank does. They want to control the move of money, and so that's why you want to go back and read that PDF about Dollarization 2.0 because that explains. Uh, the difficulty that banks is having trying to control uh, cryptocurrency and where they are, they're not able to control it. So now they're, they're trying to figure out what other avenues they can take to infiltrate it. Uh, the projected coming financial crisis is a story that nobody wants to talk about, but it's a story that everyone needs to know about. Uh, the projected coming financial crisis, the federal government posts the largest deficit in six years. Not very good news, folks. In 2018, the fiscal year ended September 30th, and the U.S. government closed out the year with its largest budget deficit since 2012. Uncle Sam ended 2018 with $779 billion in the red, adding to the ballooning national debt. That's really um, bad news. A combination of new federal spending and shrinking revenue due to the tax cuts accounted for a large part of the deficit. Meanwhile, the national debt expanded to more than a trillion dollars. According to data released by the Treasury Department, it was the sixth largest fiscal debt increase in the history of the United States. According to Rudders, a bipartisan policy called the Treasury Report a wake-up call. The fact that our government is posing, uh, it, it, the fact that our government is closing in on a trillion dollar deficit in the midst of an economic expansion should be a serious issue for all voters and for all candidates. And so 
Uh, that's our news for today. I think I talked, I started with the PDF of Dollarization 2.0. But then again, you absolutely really want to go back and read Dollarization 2.0. Uh, it's a very enlightening, it's very informative, and it really helps you to understand the objective of cryptocurrency, why cryptocurrency was made, the need for cryptocurrency, what cryptocurrency is doing to fiat money, and what cryptocurrency is doing to banking. Again, I'll add that it is really the story of Ripple Labs and the digital asset XRP. The story becoming a global Ripple Labs story the digital asset XRP becoming a global story of political power and economic power. We'll continue to follow that story. All right. Thank you for joining me, folks. Until the next time, wherever you are, have a good day. And if it's nighttime, have a good night.